listening to Strange Label. <laughs> Hello, I'm Chris Brake. And I am sitting here with my good friend John Rapp. And Jake. All right. This is strangelabel.com. Wednesday nights, we're live, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Chris Break Show. Go to chrisbreakshow.com for past episodes. Jake. All right. Okay. Let's do this thing. Sorry. <laughs> well, it sounds like a can. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. John, hey. I got to tell you something. Jake, you can listen. I saw a hit and run on my way on my way today. Dang. Driving. I was with my daddy. No, yeah. hit and run? What are we talking about? A, I saw a car. A car? No, not a person. Not I saw, a person. I saw a car get rear-ended, and they were sitting there at the light, you know? And the woman had a kid in the seat with her, you know. They got rear-ended by a guy, like in a Cherokee or something. I think you might have to, you know, file a police report, right? Well, then this guy just went around, cut through traffic, and then just took off. Mm. So I I was like, holy crap, this son of a bitch, it's a hit and run. Yeah. So I wrote down the license plate number. Uh I got it. And then my dad called 911 and was like, hey. But he's got the fancy Bluetooth going through the phone, going through the car, you know? Nice. So I got to hear it all. He's like, they put you on hold, you know, as soon as you answer, and then the 911 operator, and then, you know, he gave her all the information, and uh, I just play all that stuff, and she said, well, thank you, thanks for all that, that was a lot of information, got his name, and then an hour later, she called him back, and asked, uh, and apparently, we drove back, and apparently the woman left, too. Uh, so he just said it was a property damage issue is what he told her. Hmm. Everybody looked okay. And then so an hour, 911 calls back. She says, hey, are you still there at the scene? Hmm? Uh, there's a cop there now, like an hour <laughs> later. And she's like, he, he doesn't see anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the woman probably never called called to report it. What? what? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So the, hit, the, the, lady, the person that got hit, not a big deal to him. Not a big deal. I guess not. I don't know. He disappeared. They didn't want anything. Uh, our guest just informed us that it'd be 810. Yeah. It's time Carl to Carl Spain. Oh, Carl Spain's calling us. Yeah. All right. Let's talk to the man. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello. What's How going on? I'm pretty good. Mr. Carl Spain. I'm here. The man. The devil's advocate. <laughs> Are you going to beat up anybody today? No, no, no. I, 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 I'm going to be uh, as accommodating as possible. Yes. You know, we'll be speaking to a guy named Tim Alman, who, uh, who wrote the book. I can't even read this title. Let alone, I don't know if I could. The, you know, when a title is so dense, you, right. you, you probably aren't going to be able to make it to the book. At least I'm not. But the book is called... The principal legal standard for the first genuine doctrinal reformation of the church. Is that doctrinal? Is that how you pronounce that? Correct. Oh, yeah. So we said we should get this guy on and, uh, let's do it. Feel free to slap him around if you want. <laughs> no, I want to hear what he has to say. I, I, I think it's kind of, he's got several Hello? themes running through his stuff. So I want to see which one he emphasizes. Yeah. I'm very interested too. Tim. Hello? Tim Allman. Allman, how do you how do you pronounce that? You got an E in there. Allman. Allman, so I was right. 
He is, uh, only to confuse people. You did a, <laughs> you did a good job, but it doesn't take much for this guy. <laughs> uh, How's it going? Pretty good. You wrote the book, The Principled Legal Standard of, for the First Genuine Doctrinal Reformation of the Church. Yeah, so I figured if I was going to write a conspiracy book, it'd be the conspiracy of all conspiracies. And what is that? What is the conspiracy? Is it like what we all... Because I kind of believe, you know, I'm not a Christian, and I kind of believe that, you know, it was... The Bible was created, or at least the version we know of, pretty much the whole thing, but the version we know of, I believe, was created by the governments to keep people in line and control people, you know? And, well... And King James, and, you know, how they, they changed everything in the book. Well, whenever you get governments involved appointing uh, blue ribbon commissions, you know there's a cover up. And when the church gets involved too, you know we're all going to hell. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think a lot of, at least I don't hear too many Christians complain about the fact that you know this. It was like I mean, in England wasn't Christianity like government sanctioned? Like you had to be Christian? Like this was the official book? Uh, for a time, uh, actually, um, it was m more the church that kind of ran things. They intimidated the kings quite a bit. Um, but um, what they have actually done is they have mistranslated the Bible. They've engaged in revisionist history. And uh, what they've been doing is uh, repackaging and rebranding the same old product for about 1,700 years as, as though it's something new. And really what they're doing is the same old thing. And uh, they've mistranslated the Bible on purpose to create vagaries, uh, to make it open to interpretation. I mean, if you think about it, the Bible is the only book in human history that cannot be translated. Did you ever notice that? How's that? Well, I mean, uh, it, you know, that's, that's you, you, can read, you can read War and Peace, okay, in English. You don't have to go learn Russian mm. to figure out what he's saying. You can pick any book that's written in any other language, and you don't have to go back and study. The, the whole point of interpreting is so so people who don't know the original language can get exactly what's being said. So right? What's the uh, – yeah, I, uh, I want to tell you, I'm Chris, and you're sitting here with John. Hey. and uh, Carl's here. Of course, Jake is here. But, yeah, Carl's, yeah. On, the, Carl's on the Skype with us as well, mm -hmm. Carl Spain. Yeah. Um, so what is this conspiracy here? What's the well, problem? Can I, can I break well, in, Chris, and ask him a question? I'm just yeah. curious. Are you implying then that there is uh, no a spiritual motivation for any of these books that are just completely fabrications? Or are you implying there is a spiritual or metaphysical inspiration which then other people corrupted and misinterpret? I'm curious which, which of those two avenues you, you come from. Well, for those who are in the game, in the know, it comes down to the phrase, all men, which is rather similar to my name. It is missing. Um, either Jesus Christ died for all men, or he died in the place of all men. You see the different interpretation there. They're drastically different. Well, right? What's the difference, for or in the place of? Semantics. Well, uh, penal substitution is God punishes an innocent guy, and he pretends it's you. And so he's all hunky-dory with you now. Right. You see? And so whether you're saying God or justice or justice needs to be satisfied, really what they're doing is they took the honor doctrine, repackaged it and rebranded it, and uh, call it the penal substitution doctrine. And really, it's the same honor doctrine. They're just speaking of it in two different analogies, basically. The honor doctrine is you got two fellows. Uh, man yeah. offends God's honor. God has to defend his honor. You know, a gentleman has to defend his honor. He'll die for honor. And so... We meet on the field of onion with dueling pistols, but he loves us so much, he has a second stand in for us, and he shoots the second. And so the innocent guy there who stands in our place, he takes the bullet. And, co and so God has defended his honor. His honor is satisfied. And so now he can get along with us. And if you put that in terms of judges and robes and prison orange, here you have justice. You see, when God's justice needs satisfied, and so justice demands its pound of meat. And so then God has an innocent guy get hung in our place, and then justice is satisfied. So whether it's justice or honor, they're telling the same tale. There's only one small problem with that. Mm -hmm. God that? didn't hang Christ on the cross. A bunch of people did. But that was uh, God's Yeah, will. well, you see, that's when you start, um, yeah, that's when you, when you start asking questions, and they start, 
they start just inventing things and doing whatever. And uh, burn the Jews, burn the Jews. Yeah, you ever listen to Ray Comfort? Oh, I keep it down right now. <laughs> you, ever listen, you ever listen to Ray Comfort's uh, One Minute Gospel? I I have heard that a little bit, and yeah, it seems it seems manufactured, and it's funny his name is Comfort because that's all he talks about is comforting things. Well, the premise that they're actually using is, in order to make the penal substitute seem believable or to be the case, they must portray all men as having done something uh, deserving of punishment. Right. And once again, we're back to the phrase of all men. Okay? And I will ask those people who believe that, I will say, well, okay, let's start with the infant who lives five minutes and dies. Why don't you tell me what crime he's committed that he deserves to be nailed to a tree? So then we'll saying, move on. We'll so move on to Jerry's kids. So you're saying there's a many, many paradoxes in uh, the standard interpretation of Christian theology, which no, are, no. are, not, which are nonsensical. That, I, uh, I'm saying there are many contradictions. Co okay, contradictions, whatever. That, but, yes, but, you see, to make it to make you believe that all men deserve to be punished, you see. But, but first, what, that, uh, that, that, get me back to my question, which is, yeah. that, uh, let's say I, I grant you that 100 percent. I say absolutely 100 percent. I admit that. But my argument is that has nothing to do with whether or not there's a God. So now I ask you. Well, the that is correct. There. Okay. So now my question to you is. Do you believe there's a God, and if you do, what is he? Well, actually, it is the Christian God, and uh, we just happen to have the correct doctrines about him and his policies toward man. So you think the Christian God was um, uh, divine and or uh, a, a super prophet, uh, but, that, uh, but that the Bible and the other stuff we're looking at today is somehow um, not accurate about what happened? Well, it's easy to prove it's not accurate. Um, I, I could start with how they create vagaries and generalities. Where you have Thanatos, Apothenesco, uh, those two words, they'll just translate both of those generically as death. In English, you will not know the Greek, the Greek definitions and meanings of those words. Uh, Ephesus, um, you can go look a, at Aphime, Aphime, Charismenos, they'll translate all three of those words as forgive, and only one of them means forgive. And uh, to make the penal substitute seem believable, they portray God as overly severe, and they specialize and take things out of context, you know. Uh, they do that all the time. They'll take a, 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 a verse that's actually meant for one specific people group, and they'll apply that to all men. So you're saying God is love? I'm saying uh, God has common sense, and he's a gracious fellow. He can tell the difference between an infant and Hitler. Yeah, love, love does not have common sense. You know what I mean? Well, if you're saying God is love, I agree with you. Yeah, well, you see, uh, uh, this is a highly controversial book. Highly. Well, it's uh, why would it be you know what? If you're pissing if off saying... religious people, if you are pissing off religious people, you're doing something right. <laughs> I, I don't believe Christ had a problem down at the bar of the atheists. Hey, I'm with you all the way. I, I you know, I, I, I think that you're 100. Uh, percent God is love, and if you're saying uh, that uh, that a lot of people have used that truth for many evil purposes of course i mean well, good grief look, we're, look we're at it like humans. this look we're at it humans. like this let me ask you this suppose do i were to tell you this okay do you think there's suppose a i were to tell you this no matter you what you do in your chris, life do you think there's a satan pardon other than chris do you think there's a satan Oh well, yeah, you know they they mystify angels when really they're just beings like we are, though they all they be different. Uh, but you know it's not. Uh, yeah, uh, Satan is actually um, it, it, really what happens when you know, like when you're arguing evolution, you have to go back to the beginning of all things, and you're back to the Big Bang. You see, and uh, when you're talking about God, God and man, salvation and all that, uh, you have to actually go back to the original rebellion to explain a lot of things. You have to go back to the beginning. What's the original rebellion? Well, it's, basi it's basically basically this. Here's the original that's, rebellion. That's how he's saying Satan was created, correct? Well, Satan and all the angels were created, and uh, they were created uh, with inborn knowledge uh, to so their feet would hit the ground in righteousness, being good fellows. Uh, what Satan did is what people classically do. Uh, Satan, in an attempt to justify his rebellion and disobedience, he, he accused God of what he himself is guilty of. You see? 
I got an alternative theory for you. Well, it's, it's biblical hypocrisy, where the hypocrite accuses the innocent of what the hypocrite himself is guilty of. What is Satan accusing God of? Well, here you have a God, right, who's saying, praise me! <laughs> oh, he refuses to do it. Satan says, no, no you praise what, me. What he's doing is he's accusing God of what Satan himself wants to be praised. He's accusing God of pride. Mm. You see what I mean? Yeah. He's accusing God of uh, everything Error. that Satan is guilty of. And you see, it has to do with this. God did no outward acts that could be that are prima facie evidence of evil. God has not done anything evil. And uh, so when you can't pick well, an outward ex- act, you, you have to do Sandy inward. Hook, man. And so pride yeah. is an inward thing, you see. Inward? Yes, pride. It's inward. It's not outward. I think an, an impure motive. A motive is within, within you. An impure motive is within you, you see. It's not outside you. And so Satan accused God of an impure motive. He, he accused God of everything that Satan himself is guilty of to make his rebellion appear justified because who should follow a corrupt narcissistic God? He basically called him a liar. You know, I, I've studied theological law and I've done it. Uh, but anyways, I don't do it in seminary because all I'm going to do is learn BS in there. It's this. When, you, when two parties disagree and neither of them suffers from ignorance... They are both calling each other a liar. Mm. And that's what happened with Satan and God. They disagree. You can look in 1 John. Look at, you know, they haven't totally butchered the scriptures. You can look in 1 John. If you say this is the truth and it is not, you're calling God a liar. That's the <laughs> ramifications of it, whether you're aware of it or not. Mm-hmm. I got and it. So Very when, you, when you have God and Satan not agreeing, Satan is saying, no, this is the truth. God is saying, no, this is the truth. Satan's calling God a liar. And one who lies covers up. One who covers up has an impure motive and is not good. Yeah. Now, how do you how do you answer that question? How do you I test God? The problem with it is that it 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 fails the matrix paradox. Well, I'm and, saying this: Jesus Christ and, entered this matrix to answer that question, being no, well, the Son I'm of God. Saying, see, it's tied to your yeah. purpose, right? You have a point of view in this universe. If you're a pawn of these two great powers, then you're nothing but some guy in the matrix. In order for you to count, in order for your point of view to be important, in order for what Christ said about you to be true, you have to have free will. You have to have... Of course. You have to have this... Of course you do. And your testimony has to be true. so, So mathematically, what are your requirements for free will? This God that's going to judge you would have to know your physical environment, your macro world, He'd have to know your intentions. And every, some, every hair on your head. Look, right? Is, and, this, and your intentions, right? There's a difference between reaching for someone's hand to knock them off of the edge and to, to catch this them. Is where, this and, is where and we, last but not yeah, least, okay. Okay. he'd have to communicate to you the correct answer. Yes. You'd have to know that you weren't supposed to do it and choose to anyway. Okay. So for those three things to exist... Are you ready? Inside your consciousness, and there be a Satan, then the whole free will thing falls apart. So I yeah. argue that when Christ casts out the demon and they say we are legion, basically what you're looking at is a situation where there's a love motivated choice, which is the correct one, and then there are a legion of sinful or error choices, if you want to look at it mathematically. Hmm. Uh, and and so we get free will. We exist in this universe created by this consciousness and have a point of view which is purposefully balanced through deterministic forces to be to have free will. And our exercise of that revolution, you're 100% correct about the importance of evolution in this. In other words, our exercise of that free will essentially redefines that definition of love. So, uh, uh, but I, there's really no room in this, in my opinion. You know, obviously you have a different one uh, for Satan. Uh, uh, we really are uh, Satan. Carl, you don't, you don't believe in Satan. We're really Satan. Hmm. Well, that, that, that's a turn of events. I, I, didn't, I, never, I didn't know that. In other words, collectively. Carl Spain believes it. The, let's we're say all Satan. Let's or, say there's a let's say there's a there is no billion entity creatures named Satan. that have, let's say there's a billion creatures that have consciousness, right? And they can collectively make 
billions of choices a day that are not love motivated. Uh, that collective consciousness is what you would think of as Satan in the universe. Right. Words, Do you re that. We reject the biblical truth. The mathematical opposite of this uh, love definition, which, as I pointed out to you, is constantly evolving. See, that's that's the part that's really exciting to look at. I mean, if you look at the world today, it's from a thousand years ago to today, you can clearly see the love definition in the universe has evolved. Hmm. What was acceptable and even right to do for your family today would be a horrible crime you'd go to jail for. And that definition, right, which uh, first allowed slavery, even encouraged it, and then eventually made it wrong and evil, and, and it has changed. I mean, when you first arrived in America, right, you could beat your wife with a, any, anything thinner than your thumb. But now you go to jail. <sighs> so are you, are you talking about uh, human traditions, human cultures, and what humans are doing? I'm talking about the definition of love in the universe. It's evolving, and it's evolving very rapidly at this moment. This sounds is, like a new age thing, Carl. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Something That's big right. is going That's on. What it is. Something huge is going on in the universe right now. Do you know what, you know what a Hegelian is? Hegelian dialectic. I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't hear the question. You yeah. know what a Hegelian is, right? A Hegelian? No, I do I, not. I've never it's heard of two things. To, it's pitting two things against each other, but that aren't even in conflict. Like jumbo shrimp. The false premise. Now, I you thought see, Hegelian dialectic was when you you have a problem, you make a problem, and then you you present no, a that's, solution. That's, uh, that's are, uh, that, are, that are mal you dude. Talking, are you talking about Hegel? That's dialectic, Machiavellian. The thing Machiavellian causes the problems. So you're talking right, about the okay. uh, 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 thesis. Uh, antithesis and then a new thesis uh, or basically the thing that was the, the, the seed for Marxism? No, what I'm saying is the biggest problem, really, believe it or not, is basically fellows like you who've been educated. What? Me? Yeah. I deal, I'm a working man, I deal with real life. I know how to be loving toward your hey, neighbor. Man. It Carl, doesn't have evolve. You, Carl, hey, have you been through you. seminary? I, I didn't go to college. Have you been through some type of Christian doctrine teaching thing? Where did you learn these things? I'm what's called an autodidact. Uh, but but, but did you wh did you ever you know get taught? Also, that means that means you're really qualified to uh, comment on those uh, <laughs> the scriptures. I, I thought that, honestly, Carl, I was under. I thought that hey. you were you used to be a pastor or something. Oh no 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 no! I wrote a book called The Revelation, which is about God is love math theory. But uh, uh, and and of course I. But but as far as going to college and that kind of thing, I never did that. I I was the publisher of a newspaper for many many years um, uh, and president of the paper. But when the daily newspaper business sort of went under, my six daily papers went under with it. And uh, so I have a long career in journalism and writing. But I didn't actually go to college. I, I came out of college and I worked my way through the newspaper business. Um, so I consider myself a working man just like you. So he's saying, uh, Timothy, he's saying he's not educated. A working man doesn't know right. Kena Greek. Well, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you hey learned man, something somewhere, right? I actually know quite a lot more. Uh, but, but anyways, the greats are never humbled by the great. It takes a jackass like me. <laughs> now, here's what happens. We got reality. Anybody who doesn't know how to be good to their neighbor is an idiot. Right. Okay? Uh, not raping your neighbor, not stealing their lawnmower, that doesn't evolve. It's always wrong. Okay? You're now, right about that. In other now, words, in the Bible, first of all, they didn't have slaves in the Bible. Translation, really? that evolutionary behavior, in other words... That which is good for me is. You're talking about humans, right? Right. Uh, you're saying. Oh, I'm talking about the standard good, of goodness, you're, not how you're people saying, act. If I'm good to my neighbor, then this is good for me, and evolutionarily, that's also true. So uh, now, now here we have it's the caveman. Though. It's better to hunt in a tribe, you know, because we'll get more g game. And then here you're into symbiosis, which right? is. Now I'm not talking about that, and that's not the message of the Bible. The message of the Bible isn't symbiosis. It's not the message. And so, if you want to have a clue where I'm coming from, maybe you ought to read my book. The message of the Bible is love, love and forgiveness. Now here I am. I'm talking about a mystery, a mystery which I have uncovered, and this idiot 
doesn't even want to hear it. He wants to talk about the evolution of love. Love contradicts the, that, that evolutionary purpose. In right? any of it. Forgiveness. In other words, back if you the, forgive someone who, who, who's taken a smack at you, that's not good for you. Well, you know. It sounds like you're like Carl. You, you are you're hey. saying things evolve, and Timothy, you're saying there's a constant. Hey, I'm an atheist. I don't I'm fucking saying, believe any of this shit. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm saying there's a standard of law. Okay, there is a standard of law. And Carl, and you I, seem to be totally against it. You know, the standard of law. Well, I was an atheist. Here's here's what uh, a lot of what th this is written on. Okay, it has to do with the standard, the legal standard of how to prosecute a case. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's okay. Concise. Oh. Now, you, you see, in order to be guilty of wrongdoing, you have to exist. You have to commit the act of wrongdoing. You see, and evidence decides the case. That faith is not involved in law. If you look at any example of the characters in the Bible, like Job, you see, look at the. It's all legal. Job, he's being bribed for his testimony to say that God is good. God is venerable, God is good. Job, God's paying him, bribing him. God says that's not true, you see. And that's like, well, wait a minute, Job's intimidated. You are, you are intimidating him to get his witness. Now, you see, that's got free will written all over it. You can't intimidate a robot. But anyways, right. you have witness tampering. You see, he's singing my song, man. Intimidating witnesses, in the case of Job. And... You have in the Bible, the whole thing, even in the New Testament, looking at Pauline letters, the idea is to love that which is good above your own life, your neighbor and that which is good above your own life, to do that which is right, you know, even if, even if you have to give up your life. That's, that is, uh, I would say that would be the ultimate decent fellow in my books. And so that's what you have all throughout the Bible. And like I said, where Satan and God disagreed, Satan's calling God a liar. Jesus Christ took on the form of, of the form of a servant to be tested and tempted because he actually oh, is oh, in the same state of his father. You see, here you have so three people. So you believe you Jesus is real? Well, of course. Oh, okay. Now, you see, here you have three people, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're all saying the same thing. Satan's saying something else. So if one of the three is lying, they're all lying because they're all saying the same thing. Jesus Christ was basically the CEO is what he was and he he took on the form of a servant and he was tested and tempted did you you're like doing theology with just logic, like joe was with little logic puzzles i mean you, it, you pick uh, them <laughs> you pick anybody in the bible you pick anybody what the, the three dudes got they got word scrabble names and three dudes got thrown in the fiery furnace you got stefan he wouldn't change his testimony you, you've got what daniel lions then i mean face it in the united states right here if you suffered persecution, real persecution, in the United States right now, guess what? Uh, there would be about 80% less Christians. They'll go, no, I used to be one of those. That's exactly what would happen. I mean, their idea of freedom of religion is you get to be religious and it don't cost you anything. That's the exact opposite of what, uh, of what testing your faith is about. It should cost you something to find out if it's genuine, you see. It's all well, about legality. You, you can make all the biggest professions you want, but that's, that's just your profession. Evidence decides the case. It's just and so like there's, your opinion, yeah. man. <laughs> well, you know, it, you know what I mean? Uh, the, the legal standard of evidence deciding the case. Did you ever see the blind, the blind woman up there with the scales and the sword of truth? And, uh, she, she's got a blindfold on because she don't even know who's being put on trial because she isn't a respecter of persons. The evidence is put in a scale. The evidence decides the case. Well, that's the way it is with every man. What's the rule of law have to do with, with God? Symbiosis. Well, you see, penal substitution completely violates the rule of law. How, how can you have a, a, a God punishing an innocent fellow? See, when you, in, when, when, penal when, substitution. you don't even exist. I don't understand yeah. what the penal substitution yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know what that is. And I he don't defined know. it. But it sounded the same to me as the other thing that you said. It, it, it honor these other doctrines. Is it, is it honor yeah. theology the honor doctrine. versus honor doctrine versus penal doctrine? And you, you they're the same thing. Yeah, and uh, but oh. okay, they are the same thing. Yeah, it sounded like they were. Well, penal is short for you know you know like penal colony, 
penalty, yeah, I understand so what you're punishment. Or, or, so that so he's uh, accusing God. Of see, Calvin was a lawyer. This, this 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 algorithm because he sent Christ down here to die for our sins, which is absurd. The whole that whole analogy is absurd. Well, you know what's interesting Wait, what's uh, about huh? sins. Uh, what's interesting about sins. Uh, there's probably about five or six Greek words. Uh, all you'll see is the English word sin. Cover up all the meanings of those different Greek words. They do that on purpose, by the way. Yeah, what, so what is the, what is the, the, the thing that they've changed? That's one of the things that you speak on is, uh, the flaws in the Christian doctrine and, uh, what things have been changed in the Bible. You said people have purposely changed things to hijack yes. it. What what was yes, changed? Yes, hold on. I, I do. I do want to read your English Bible. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I do want to. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta uh, we'll, get, we'll get right back to what was hijacked. But I just want to tell you that I love your voice. Like what you, you suddenly get the same accent as Tiny Tim. My voice is changing, and uh, I thought I was talking to Johnny Depp. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what it is about my voice. My voice is changing. It's been changing since I've been getting older. Nothing I can do about it. It does have a good voice. Where, where, uh, what, what uh, region is that? Uh, uh, man, it's it's in smack dab in the middle of West Virginia. Hmm. It's a West Virginia accent. Not really. No. It's no, like I, Dale Dale. I built a house in West Virginia once. And nobody sounded like that up there. I don't know what to say about my uh, about my voice. Uh, I, Tim I, I have a uh, I have problems. I I have uh, I actually have a, a, a vocal tag, and uh, I have to speak in a certain way so that the the, the uh, tag isn't heard. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm uh, sorry. I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to make you self conscious about it. No, that's all right. <laughs> I mean, if if I if I speak normally, uh, you can hear this tag back here. But so I don't know. I didn't hear so it change really. What's a vocal tag? Just so you know, it sounds about the same as the. It sounds well, you know, like a skin tag. I've been sucking do down again? some. Uh, I've been do sucking it down some Seagram's uh, black cherry fizz here, uh, and so uh, I, I would say I'm kind of relaxed. <laughs> so, they sound I, 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 you know, I, I don't know. My, my voice uh, did start changing. Uh, I don't. I haven't seen a doctor about it, but uh, I ain't worried about it. It sounds good. Yeah, my I believe my voice sounds a little different today too, and I believe well, it's because I ch- I chipped a tooth in the back, and mm-hmm. it's it's sharp, and so it's like, what? Well, anytime I speak, I'm cutting my tongue. I'm in well, pain we, right now talking. Well, so let's should. let's put it this way: um, if somebody wants to ad- adopt a child, they have to go through an extensive background check, right? Yeah, you know, well, it depends on uh, what country. Yeah. Okay. Now, when, when you have when you have a legal accusation between Satan and God that was as yet unproven. Wait, is this about what was hijacked from the Bible? Yeah, what did they take out of the Bible? What what, what oh, yeah. did they change? Well, you want me to talk? Well, um, there are some books that are not in the Bible which should be, but there are some books in the Bible is that should not, that should, one of them? That should not be in there. Hey, Chris, I got a theory for you on that you'll like. Is the Book of Jasher one of them that should be in there? What do you think about the Book of Jasher? Some of those books are quoted like that. The Book of Enoch. Um, oh, I'm talking about the Book quoted. of Jasher. Uh, oh, what's Carl's and, theory? Uh, hey, hey, also, they're, the Old Testament, they're, they're actually taking from the wrong text this uh, is for the Old story. Testament. Um, actually, if you look in the New Testament, you will see that every time the Old Testament is quoted, they quote the LXX, Greek Septuagint, verbatim. Well, what was that? They quote the LXX in the New Testament. No, 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 no. You didn't say the thing I, I wanted to hear again. What? What do you want? Be- what do you want the- Did you say the word Beusian? What's that? I heard you say something like... I heard that, too. What okay. is that? Look, I, I can give you con- all kinds of examples. Is there an extra word on there that you didn't... What's Beusian? Hey, Chris... I know it's something that Sep- you're conspiracy- Septuagint. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that. Okay, Septuagint. That's the, uh, I, I um, want to know. The Old Testament was was um, I wanna talk translated to into the hey, Greek around you, 300 BC. Hey, look, you Christians go over there. I'm going to go over here and talk to Carl. <laughs> Septuagint. <Okay. laughs> the um, this, hey Chris. Yeah. The Septuagint so is the Greek the version of the Old Testament. Okay. There's a, there's and a, it was it was made <laughs> at 300 BC, and it was taken from a much older manuscript. We should do left and right pans. I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could. This is good. You know, but anyways, 
it's common knowledge that the Pope read through all of these yeah. uh, different books and chose the ones that would make up the Bible. Now, think about that. I think that we that all agree the Pope is in on some hijacking, right? Well, they've had, that, they've had that, many that means church councils. That those lost Christians books don't like Catholics. Are actually I mean, they're, in they're the, the people responsible for the, the Crusades the and Vatican. all the. Well, they've had many church councils. You know, they started in you know, right around this the Vatican fourth, has fourth century. It goes all the way back. Yeah, that I got you, Carl. Has everything the that they haven't revealed it. Yeah, Those there's all types of history stuff that they're hiding. And, and well, you know, the Lollards, King James, the Lollards, the Catholic Church. I mean, these lost books are there in the Vatican Library. Fucking they could be if Dead you can scrolls. Talk to well, Pope into letting the world see them. They're there. Well, I would like to. I would like to see a full copy of the the Book of Giants. Christians don't like Catholics. Oh yeah, I love the Giants. Yeah, the yeah. Giants. What about these Nephilim? You know, there's only fragments of the um, of the uh, Book of Giants, and uh, those real small fragments are absolutely fascinating. You got 200 angels. You got 200 kinds of every other animal, and you have miscongenation. <laughs> this sounds like a party. <laughs> well, it's uh, an LSD you know, trip. <laughs> yeah, are the animals getting along, or is it like the Jehovah's Witness pictures, where all the animals are friendly and love each other, and they can eat side by side with humans and hang out <laughs> at the picnic table? Well, back in Genesis six uh, is where the trouble started, uh, where you had the corruption of all flesh. Um, really, what's going on here is is the uh, with the church is the confusion between that which is under man's control and that which is beyond a man's control. You see. There are things that man needs help with, and there or, are other, other or, things. Or, or the difference between determinism and free will. Oh, oh right. no! Shut the um, <laughs> uh, What's your name? What's your name again? Carl. Oh, okay. Hey, guess what? Right. You can you can choose to grow a set of tits all you want, but you ain't gonna get them. Okay. Oh. Uh, I believe they have hormones for those. You exactly. got free will. I don't. I don't deny. Uh, a free no, no, you, you said I don't deny it at all. I don't know why you keep bringing it up. Hey, we've got a girl on Strange Label who said grew said stuff you tits. don't have control of. That's what I'm telling you is deterministic. It's like and this. And the stuff you do, that's free will. That You're, you're, you're saying that, uh, that it doesn't actually contradict what I'm saying at all. Yeah, yeah. From the outside, it sounds like you guys don't really I don't quite get it. Of- I know there is a lot of debate with this Christianity thing on uh, if well, uh, free will, if God allows you to... I don't know. Well, I don't know. What I'm really did, I don't understand. What I, I just what don't I really, Why? Why? What I'm talking why? about is nature. The, the why, biological Chris? nature is really what I'm talking about. Why? Well, you know you know how like when a good looking woman walks by? Yeah. Something kicks in in your body and it doesn't ask questions whether she's married, whether you're married, how old you are, how old she is. Ooh. It doesn't ask any of those questions. It makes that a is little, a serious problem. A little tingle. And so uh, there is an animalistic nature uh, that's in the biology of man that is uh, a constant source of trouble for man. Why do black men tend to do catcalling more than white men? From what I've seen. I don't think that's I don't, true at all. I don't know. I don't get around much. Site, and I'm telling you, that was e- it was equal. The, the, the Construction the, site? Tim, that was airtight. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get around much. That's airtight, you know? What's up with these people do? I don't know. I don't know. I don't get around much. <laughs> but he's saying, he's saying this, you know, black people seem more animalistic. I didn't say anything I about black people. Actually, Darwin said that. I, just said that. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say Darwin that. Darwin didn't say it either, but John, I think that's what you're getting. John, at. one time I had this conversation with a very nice black lady, and in it, she bluntly pointed out to me that I just compared black people to animals. And that's something that you're really, you're not supposed to do. I mean, whatever. Te- technically, I'll cross that line, but we just compared the whole human race to animals. We have it. We all have an animalistic tendency, well, except for it seems like they seem to act the, more on it. Like you said, one way that comes out is cat calling more. They seem to be well chasing women more, whereas like other let me give races, you an example. white people, very more res- reserved and laid back, and you know some, wished that they could do that. Basically, good, <laughs> let, let me give you an easy work. example. I, I think Here, that's, a real that's the truth. That's like, that's, that's like the way a I see it. Stereotype. That's not like true. Let me give you a very simple example. I've seen, if you want to say okay, that that's not true at you, all, maybe it's not. I've but seen many the, black men grab their did dick you ever, when a nice woman walks by and goes, <laughs> I've seen that on multiple occasions. And they, Do you ever see a dog? Do you ever see a dog with the never seen gi- guy, most either. giant pile of food Asian, there is that he can't Mexican. possibly eat, right? But yet he won't share it. 
Ugh. It might just be cultural, okay. too. I mean, you know, if they lived in the suburbs. You can't say they. Well, that's. If, if a black person have... is surrounded by a bunch of white people, they might have to act all straight, you know? You have impulses that are, that are, um, selfish impulses that rise up. You know, it's just like you have two kids in a sandbox. The girl, the girl next door he, to the other kid, she goes, mine, mine, and she grabs his truck. Yeah. And what she's doing there, she's bearing false witness. It ain't her truck. Bearing and false when witness. he resists, she okay. hits him over the she's head al- with a shovel. She's also coveting those neighbor's goods at the same time. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. She, she, her impulse to get that truck didn't ask who owned it, whether it was hers or not. You see what I'm saying? The crowned the and same- conquering child. You just, watch I just don't see how it's relevant. And so um, there are... There are well, problems. Yeah, what are you leading yeah. up to? I mean, you're, you're saying that kids, just being <laughs> a, just being a child, a, you've broken all matter? these rules. Uh, well, it's, it's so, just children. It's just children acting naturally until you uh, uh, children instill some principles too. in them. Children, you see. children masturbate too. I mean, it's you know, you a, ask a kid, "Did you steal that cookie?" No. What do they do? They natu- lie. It's natural for a human to break all of the good decent rules right out of the, of the, the gate yeah. is that what you're saying well what i'm saying is that comes natural that, natural. that it isn't some little kid sitting there scheming you don't they're have to just teach they're just scheme. following their instincts right. is what they're doing yeah if, if you don't raise a child and don't say anything to them and just let them run around they'll be acting like that well, you as adults. A, uh, you got another point that you go you set it up perfect what's the bring it home tim what what do you <laughs> what's the next part well Oh. There are things that man needs help with, and uh, and uh, that's what Christ came for. Okay. And like I said, I was bringing up the adoption analogy. We cannot be entrusted into Christ Christ care until there's been a background check, and so therefore he had to be checked out and tested, and that's what happened. Can I ask Carl? Uh, Carl, do you believe? Man, that really hurts my tongue to say your name. Uh, do you believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and died for our sins? Um, I believe that everything Christ said, if you view it through, uh, the, like I said, sort of God is love math is a very accurate roadmap to why we're here. So no, what you don't. It what sounds like a long note. So you don't. You don't believe that Jesus Christ was what the your po- God. I believe that you... I can't actually say it, but... No, I have to understand sort of where I see it from. In other words, I I see God as existing in a realm that we don't exist in. It's a part of the universe we're not really in. We're in another part of the universe. We have a purpose. Uh, And our purpose really is to, to, like I said, evolve that definition of love through free will decisions. Um, By definition, that means that um, you, in other words, do you remember what uh, Jefferson did to the Bible? He cut the Bible up and he took out all the words of Christ and he put them in a separate Bible and he removed the miracles. That's almost exactly the line of thinking that I'm on. In other words, that, that the words of Christ lead you to the truth about why you're here and about what can change you and make you closer to this God. But to look for physical miracles is justification of it. And to look for these little things which humans need to reassure them of the truth or whatever. This actually violates the math of determinism. A good person on an airplane flying, flying across the ocean when the, when the, when that engine burns up on that plane, that plane crashes no matter how much they're praying. They live in a deterministic universe, so do you. We all come here and we go. We make these free will decisions and we pay the price for whether we make them right or not. Even the but New they, Agers believe that you can manifest your own, your own you know, destiny. That's fascinating because uh, actually the traditional Christian doctrine here from the Dark Ages, penal substitution, is actually totally against that. It's where you can do whatever you want to do. Some innocent guy paid the price. And you're so against you saying that? that Carl's down. I'm against that, of course. I, I, don't, I have no idea what that even is. I, I, mean, think, I, he's, I, I think he's saying that you said what he's saying. I'm saying that um, that you... You're saying that Jesus way, isn't real. That's what it sounds like. What I was saying was is that no, no, traditional Christian doctrines was, are, are contrary to what you just said. I'm saying uh, uh, traditional what Christian are doctrines... Traditional? Go, go back it's to the that, uh, It's that uh, man sinned, God has wrath for sin, but God loves man, so God punished an innocent guy instead. And you don't you don't believe that? Of course, of course not. What do you believe? What? 
What is? Because uh, it believe sounds like Christ died on the cross for our sins. Yeah, it sounds like you believe traditional. Christian. Well, when you look, when you look, died on a cross for our sins. If you look at the Greek, you'll only see harmatia. You won't see harma, harmatano, harmatole. What does you won't see any. Mean? It's all Greek to me. Harmatia. It's, I call it. I call it the falling short condition. That's the problem with these translation arguments. What is, the people would have to no, speak Latin to understand it. It's the falling it? short. It's it's the falling short condition being caused to fall short of your desired goal. That's what the translation really means. To fall short. In that context, yes. So what did he do if he didn't die for the sins? What did he do? The idea is to achieve the truly lawful state inside and out. What? Uh -oh. The fuck does that see? mean? No, it's I don't see. Well, it means totally this. Lost. It means uh, when a good-looking woman walks by, you're back not going to gonna lust after her. Hey, we all like women, right? Yeah. Okay. Hey, you so know, like, saying, so wait a minute, I, I think I got it, Chris. He's saying that there's this state um, is this like Nirvana? This sort of enlightened uh, um, um, state that where you uh, have agape or God's love flowing through you, and therefore you are no longer uh, uh, influenced by these um, other, you know, born yeah. in uh, temptations. Am I right, Carl? With the lights, yes. Out, uh, rising dangerous. above the animal nature. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sure you fellows must be. Familiar I'm not with seeing that. a black and white here, Timothy. Like I, I don't understand. It sounds like you're you you do believe like in in Christianity, and you do believe that Jesus died, and, and there is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But then you keep saying that there's. You say that that that's not what you believe, or you don't believe that that he died for our sins. I mean, what's the difference between that and what you do believe? Well, you see. Like I say, he, I'm telling you what I do not believe and what is not the case. Jesus Christ was not punished in the place of all men. Okay? What, what, what was it then? If it wasn't that, it was. He was tested and tempted even unto the point of death and even experiencing death. And, uh, he, uh, was, uh, found to be without, without sin, wrongdoing, or an impure motive. And then what happened? To be found just like God is in his state. So they they judged him and they found him to be 100% legit. Correct. And so then his word cannot be questioned because it's been proven by legal evidence that he means well, so that he loves. Then, then what? And so then he would be the one who would be qualified to take care of man's problems. So he didn't die. Yeah, he did die. But they found him not guilty. Right, they found him not guilty. Right. So the whoa, traditional whoa, thing they? is the, the who's the who's they? Who is they in the traditional the story? Romans. Yeah, it's traditional the it's the uh, it it's the it's 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 the same court. He was found not guilty in the same, the same court Roman. that Job was tested in. Okay, that's all. That's all the same setting. But you're saying that instead of them finding him guilty and him saying, "Oh, my blood is," you know, but the story is they wanted this guy Barabbas. They're like, "I can." The story is, you know. They would, they would oh, let yeah. Jesus, either yeah, Jesus or Barabbas. He's like, we'll let one yeah. of them out. It's a thing they do every year. And Good old Barabbas. I you know what's, that you know what's hilarious? Wound. Yeah. You know what's really the, hilarious? The crowd wanted and him they won't, instead of You know what's Jesus, hilarious? And, and like, they won't bring out in the English? Barabbas so means, means son of the father. <laughs> hmm. Hey, Chris, okay. I want to ask so, why you're an atheist. Uh, cause it's not real. Well, um, at some point, I would Let like to hear the Let me ask you a question. Do you feel that your consciousness here... Do I feel... Is, do I is, feel what? Your consciousness here. Do you feel it's completely alone, or do you feel like sometimes you get advice from somewhere else? I think it's alone. So you've never had, like, a pang of consciousness or a doubt of remorse or anything where there's another thought in there that, hey, Chris, maybe I shouldn't swallow this third LSD tab or whatever. Well, yeah, but that's just yourself talking to yourself there. That's your, uh, you know. That's your what? That's yourself talking to yourself. So you think there's two of you in there, but no God. No, I think that you're able to have a conversation with yourself. I don't know what... Thoughts you know, in someone's head have to do with proving that, you know, there's a guy in the sky. Oh, you it know, does prove it. It, do, it does not prove it at all. I, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just, I, I was just looking for a wedge, an angle, a way in a, a sort of a, um, um, 
um, a critique of your atheism, so to speak. In other words, people's atheism comes from different sources. Like some people say, oh, the churches have done all these evil and bad things. Other no. people say, uh, you know. Um, I was never in the Catholic faith. Uh, I was never in any specific faith other than just general Christianity, whatever that may be. Uh, I never really went to church too much. Uh, I wasn't, it wasn't drilled down my throat. You know, there were a few times I was forced to go, but not really. You know, like maybe once or twice, like Christmas or something. I still celebrate Christmas. Um, I've been saved when I was like 19 years old, accepted Jesus Christ in my heart and all that shit. Uh, and then I, but then I went back to atheism shortly after that. Right. And I don't, I have no explanation for it. I don't know what it is. It just, it just doesn't seem to make sense that the way it's being described in this old book. Interesting. But I'd like your guys' uh, take on this. I don't like to talk. I don't like to talk about it because you know I'm not trying to bum people out. Uh, no, no, I, I wasn't. But I think it's fascinating. I think a lot of people um, think about these things. They don't always examine them. So when other people could talk about them, it helps them through it. Oh well, thanks. Uh, I want to play you guys some audio and see what you think this is. It's well, I mean, what what you make of it? It's this woman. Who our buddy Dale J. Gordon, that would really hurt my mouth, when he was in, uh, anyway, he was in Nashville, and there was a woman sleeping in the airport next to him, and in her sleep, she started chanting, and this is what she was saying, and I want to know if you guys can make any sense out of this. Let's wait for it. That sounds like Carl Spade's background. Here we go. You curses, you will turn into soul before you get to the lake of fire. Amen, amen, amen. No matter how big you are, you will be changed into a little soul before you get to the lake of fire. Amen, 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 amen. Sounds like Dante's Inferno. Crazy person. Yeah, what do you think about that? <laughs> you think she was just a crazy person? You don't think that? Because I thought that sounded like she must have had some experience with Jehovah's Witnesses, but I don't know about crushing them into little tiny souls and sending them to the lake of fire to burn. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's interesting. You know, the Bible never actually says that. Um, yeah, so yeah come, you don't believe in hell? There's no, the burning. Well, it the never burning. says that. Mm. It never says that. I mean, if if you'll notice... Uh, well, what do you think you got, about he, this, though? What, I mean, what is it? Like, Do you think it's some demon that possessed this lady? you think she's just crazy? you think it's a prayer? Crazy. What do you think? These are things it's, that... Yeah, it's, not, it's not a bit. Like, this lady, oh, yeah. this lady's real... Uh, <laughs> Someone went up to her later. There's much more audio of that. Yeah, at the end, somebody asks her if she's okay. And she's going, hey, man, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. She goes, yeah, I'm, hey, I'm fine. And then she goes right back into it. And come to find out, she's, a, she's a, like she works at the airline, right? Yeah, she's the bag check lady at the airport. And she's just 9 to 5, and that's, that was she was taking a 15-minute break or something, you know, showed up early, whatever. <laughs> like, what's going on there, you know? Because I, I don't know. That's her chanting thing. Her well, yeah, yeah, she's chanting. She doesn't do that on an airplane flight, does she? <laughs> you don't. You never know. I don't think people. she flies. And do those people fly the bag check? They, uh, they no. probably can, right? And it was Friday the thirteenth. So, I mean, is it a hex? <laughs> like, like what was she doing there? I mean, like you know. And there was a Volk nut involved. A Volk nut. She didn't like the Volk nut. She was like, "Oh, what's that?" I mean, what? What, what are it? What is it? What, if what she, she did buy a ticket, I would have TSA check her luggage twice. But, okay, I mean, Carl, you, you you don't you dismiss it, Timothy? So she, yeah, I think she just sounds like her? a crazy lady. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's all kinds of people who do that all over the world that aren't even in the Christian religion. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, you know, they, they've been in the Kandala cult. They've been they've been speaking in tongues for a thousand years, you know, and uh, you know, it's like the Pentecostals borrowed that. Yeah, I mean, people people have a whole metaphysical side to the brain, a consciousness side, which I argue is here for a reason, uh, and it has a lot of other uses and purposes and power, uh, you know, aside from, like I said, it, 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 
if there's one good choice and a zillion bad ones, most of the time your brain's going to be occupied with uh, the, the bad stuff. But does the government have an underground sex trafficking syndicate for senators? <laughs> no, but there was a prostitution ring which used to operate here in Washington, uh, and it was all high class call, call girls, and they serviced all of the different, um, um, you know, congressmen and senators. And then the one of the one of the newspapers here uh, actually got a copy of the uh, you know the credit card list that the girls had run through this service, and they tracked it back to a bunch of the congressmen, senators, and guess who one of the people on the list was? Carl Spain. No, the managing editor of their own newspaper. <laughs> you know, that was, that's what uh, Watergate was all about. But they, uh, but then those, you two, know that, then those ladies killed themselves before they had to testify. They didn't kill anybody. That guy actually, that guy had to resign as the editor of the newspaper, and uh, a couple of senators survived. What about Madam D.C., man? Yeah, yeah, she was. That's who was. Uh, she that's, killed herself, right? Did you notice that um, they never talk about what the Watergate burglars went in there to get? They went in there to get a list. Uh, they had a, a list of hookers and and all of that in, in the Watergate. That, really? That's why they went in there. That's what they won't talk about. I, every city in the world has hookers. I think. I mean, that's just like. I mean, maybe not those Arab cities where they chop your head off for it, but basically any cities that are fairly free. I mean, you go there, and I mean, that's there's, there's always hookers. But this lady killed herself, and so did her friend, who was also. A prostitute. And they were going to testify. Uh, yeah, and it was right before they had to testify to give out the names. Yeah, it's like well, being a friend of the Clintons, you know what I mean? You have a 50% chance of dying. Yeah, and they make a joke about that, but what's going on there? I mean, you know. I think they've, clearly, they've relegated. There's clearly something going on there, Carl. If you don't admit it, you're, you're a little bit out there. I think No, I, I, I would say the chances that the number of people close to them that have either been murdered or committed suicide that all had top secrets on them, it, I, it's it's scary. The odds of that happening in, you know, are, are like a million to one unless the Clintons are in some way involved. The, uh, the general public, actually they know this, are not capable of thinking on a conspiratorial level. I don't so, I find that So, so that's why they do that and get away with it. I mean, that might be true, but it seems it seems pretty common to... To run into someone that knows something about some weird conspiracy theory, you know? Oh, sure. I think the, the public does believe conspiracy theories. But the government generally, <coughs> I don't know. But I think he's saying that people, the public, I, I, they don't have the brain to yeah, point out like, wrong. okay, well, you know, Chile, or this happened in Chile, and now Senator Clinton's going over there. But really, what is she trying to do? It's her first, she's there to, you know, stabilize the government, but that means she's putting her own people in. And, you know, I mean, like... And then I don't know, can connect that with some yeah. earthquake happening over there, like that they type of like, have... like Mel Gibson man and fucking conspiracy theory. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but people may not know the specifics of things. I but... need you, baby. <laughs> if it's quite all right, I love you, baby. Uh, hold me tight, I need you, baby. What I think oh, it's weird pre- about it. <laughs> what was that? Supposed to know all the words. Well, there's a there's a there's See, a so segment the of the population that, they eat conspiracies for breakfast. Right, but you're and, but uh, most people don't. You but say. there is Mr. and Mrs. Jones. They're never going to believe uh, uh, on a conspiratorial level usually. And that's yeah, but they, most but they, people. They, people they subconsciously sense something's wrong and they vote the power. The it party. has to do with security. Uh, if your government's that damn evil, oh my gosh, there's no comfort in that. Um, every every right, expert in Britain came on We're TV and in the ra- on radio and in the newspapers and said, do not vote for Brexit, do not vote for Brexit. Every expert, every politician, and the people went out and voted for it. Why? They just had a feeling something wasn't right, and they wanted to change. Um, the, the people can do that. They're, they don't have to know what's wrong. They don't have to understand. Well, the they, were, they were living the union. They were living it, and they didn't like what they were living. Right. So they got yeah. out. They said, you know what? You're telling us this is better for us. We don't believe you. Uh, so the people are smart. And that's, and that's why we're all going to vote for Donald Trump, right? You guys down with that? I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, this is a sad time in America when these are our choices to be a candidate with you. Feel my Johnson. <laughs> she's, uh, she's a criminal for sure, and he's, um, I'm really worried about him. So it's not good. I hope that they replace both of them at the last minute 
and it's just a big shit show. Like, that's what I'm hoping is going to happen. Well, you could replace the DNC's talking about it. At least they're having some meetings about some sort of contingency plan about replacing Hillary. Because I read course, the Republicans were doing the same. Republicans can't replace him. It's impossible. Yeah, I mean, what what's, what would be the reason for replacing Trump unless he gets assassinated or something like that? Uh, because he's destroying the Republican Party is what they claim. They claim that he's he's making them look like idiots. Right. Yeah, yeah, but he won the majority of votes. You see, they can't do that. In her case, they can because she well, no, would rigged the election, so they can say, "Hey, yeah, we look. haven't even gotten past that whole thing yet." Like that news, this stuff. Yeah. Something. If so, they capture Julian Assange, I'm telling you, I guarantee you, Hillary Clinton will get a. <laughs> uh, she will get to go in and personally kick that guy in the balls. They will allow that. They might even allow him to castrate. If he gets captured, that there's a guy she'll have killed. She really does not like him. <laughs> no, she does not. Well, she might be wor working on it now. It could be. I mean, she's clever. Tim, do you vote? I haven't voted in uh, several years. Four? I, I haven't voted in several years. Four? <laughs> So I, you know, I, uh, well, you know, I'm in a, well, I You're heavily, a felon, de aren't you? I'm in a, I'm in a heavily democratic <laughs> state. Okay. And, uh, whoever the Democrats vote for is whoever gets elected in this state. You know, I mean, uh, it, it's, things are starting to change in this state a little bit, but basically the only reason somebody would have it to vote around here is if they wanted to, um, you know, vote for the local sheriff or something, but national politics, it's such a heavily democratic state that uh, if you're not a Democrat, there's no point in voting nationally, that is. What about the pre-trip rapture? I need to move to a democratic state. Because, you know, we're always like, ah, Indiana sucks. Everybody says that a lot. And you think it's maybe because it's a Republican state? Hey, there's some cheap houses in Detroit. <laughs> Indiana does not suck. Indiana is a good state. I enjoy Indiana. Carl, do you live in Indiana? No, I live in Maryland, which is a lot like West Virginia. It always votes Democratic. But this last time, we elected a Republican governor. Well, that's the thing. It's funny because this time they're going to they're gonna vote Republican this time. Oh, yeah. They, I think they did it last time. There's a big, there's a huge protest. In other words, the same uh, feeling that those people in England had or, or, or Great Britain toward the Brexit thing is there's a movement like that inside the American electorate right now. There's a lot of people that want to throw the bums out that are very upset that think the system is rigged. They're being lied to. They don't know what the conspiracy is, but they know there is one. Yeah, all you have to do is drive up along the river here, see all the closed down steel mills and coal mines. Sounds you like know. a Bruce Springsteen song. Hey, uh, did, did uh, China invade Taiwan? No, they didn't. Did you hear what happened, though? We sent our top admiral and our top general went there before the G20 meeting, and uh, all of a sudden, everything went quiet. I mean, just quiet. All the Everything that was going on over there just completely ceased. It was, it was really quite amazing. Um, so you were wrong, Carl. I was wrong. Well, no. I predict. I said they were planning it, and I said that there was a, a, a that I felt it would happen in September. Uh, and um, but uh, I'm actually, and I said this at the time. I hope I'm wrong, and I hope also that you, things you were, happen to prevent it from happening. So you were wrong. I was wrong. Right on. Well, that, does that make you feel good, well, John? Well, no. I just I wanted you to admit that you were wrong. It sounded like you were kind of squirming out of it. No, 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 and I just wanted to clarify it because you were saying they're about to invade, it's about to go down, and now I'm just saying it didn't happen, right? And it, it has not happened. Who's in to say it hasn't? It's not going to happen because you no, were like, yes, yeah, sixty I, I, days I, from now, and this was I like actually, a few episodes ago. I actually predicted September, so it, it, I mean, there is some time left, but but I don't actually feel it's imminent right now. In other words, rolling up into the early weeks of September, I, I, there was a, a tremendous amount of activity going on that indicated that I, yeah. that. It's gonna now, happen. Now it just stopped. I mean, that's for sure. And it just stopped. So even though there's two weeks left in September, I'm willing to tell you I'm wrong because without all that precursor activity, it would be very hard for it to happen. Oh, there's something going on. Well, what, what, what do you what do you think would happen if they did? Just went right in there. If they invaded Taiwan? Yeah. It would depend, as I say, if 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 we were involved 
early on in the early hours of the attack if we could put some air cover over taiwan if we could assert some air superiority we could prevent the attack if we don't do that if they get across and land then there's no retaking the island there's it's too small and just 23 million people it's very congested and we could never make an amphibious assault on that island nor would we uh so uh if they were to succeed and take over the island in a matter of say uh, three to seven or ten days, then we would probably uh, not be allowed to. Uh, uh, then we wouldn't do do anything about it. If our air superiority is asserted early on, we could protect the island. I think Congress would write a non-binding resolution uh, of strong condemnation. <laughs> I don't think they would. Well, look what yeah. Russia did. They didn't do nothing. Mm. Uh oh. That's all you think they do. Oh man, Carl ordered a pizza. <laughs> no, I didn't order pizza. Sorry about that. <laughs> Russia walked right down there in the in the Ukraine there. Oh, I, I, the, my plan. This article that I wrote says that this is a coordinated attack. In fact, that Russia was planning to to, uh, to move on Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania through Ukraine. Uh, yeah. And as you know, I mean. They've been saber rattling over there really badly, but the same thing happened. The same time, everything went quiet over in China. Everything went quiet in Russia too. So I don't know what's going on, but uh, uh, but I've been watching very carefully, and it's just been there's just no noise. There's uh, no troop movements, and just none of the stuff that had been happening is still happening. Well, pretty much over the past eight years. It hasn't the policy been just to watch these different countries do things and they just do them? Yeah. Look at but, how, many, how many governments in the Middle East have changed hands? But we didn't have Article 5 NATO provisions to protect those countries. We do in the case of Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania. If Russia moves on them, we're at war. We, we're, we will have to fight back. Uh, it, we're obligated. Now, we would not have to respond if China went after Taiwan. And obviously, there are no treaties covering Libya, Yemen, on, Yemen Yemeni, or uh, uh, Syria, or uh, yeah. any of those areas. So, so that's why there's so much war in those areas, partially. There's, there's no alliances to protect the small players. Okay, we're we're nearing kind of the end of the show. I, we're, we want to do a, a, a real quick three questions, you know, just to get get these in there. Look, well, we uh, we already covered the first one about penal substitution. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, penal don't even sound right. Does why it? do you think we're still in the dark ages? Because people believe in this penal substitution. Is that why? Uh, among other things, yes, that's that's one of the the major doctrines that they have is penal substitution. Why are we still in the dark ages? That's, that's well, first of all, that doctrine intriguing. was invented in the dark ages. That that is the honor doctrine repackaged uh, and uh, put in a courtroom. Okay. And uh, my, it's my the answer, same. It's the same philosophy. My answer is we're in the age of great enlightenment. Go ahead. Nice. Uh, explain how people who read your book will be able to spot any false doctrine and easily be able to refute it. Smooth, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all false doctrines uh, actually uh, make an accusation against God uh, because of this simple axiom. You see, if you agree that God exists, you see the idea is that God is good. So it's impossible to portray God as better than he is. Uh, the truth is portraying God as he is. Therefore, all false reports about God must be portray him as less than he is, as lesser in character and lesser in policies. And uh, so there's no way to, to uh, lie about the truth. Uh, you, you, you see what I mean? It's impossible. Okay. So um, uh, God must be putting in a bad light. That's why you had that woman there. Oh, hell, burn, burn, turn and burn, hell. I mean, yeah, she's well, nuts. I mean, that's a typical portrayal of God. Like he's going to burn people like a sadomasochistic person in, in hell forever. Yeah, I don't know anybody who believes that, really. Actually, it's the lake prison, and Hades is a cell block, which is actually inside the earth right now. And it'll be transferred to the lake Whoa. prison. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what it says in the Bible, literally, right? So, yeah, and Hades was placed in the lake of fire. It's going to be a firewall around the Hades uh, cell block. Oh, and okay. You see, that's all it is. You see, Hitler ain't allowed to roam around for eternity because he's a bad fellow and he ain't going to change his mind. So he gets a, a nice little room there to set in. And the fire is just to keep keep them in there. So you do believe in hell? 
Well, it's it's a it's a yeah. firewall. But you, what it's about the a, it says Lake of Fire? I mean, what else? Would, what? Amen. Well, you have to look at um, uh, John's perspective as he was seeing those things. You know, if you were looking at uh, uh, okay. uh, it's, it's like a, a fire from a okay. from afar, like from the shore. Gotcha. You see what I mean? It would look like a lake of fire. It would look like you know, it, 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 just like he's you know where you have these um, uh, you, where they were saying he was probably talking about uh, attack helicopters and. Uh, and various machines of war, you know, like he was describing them as uh, horses, you, you like horses, like flying things. And, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it, 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 it's not like God said, okay, John, this is the A1 Abrams tank. Remember to write that down. You know, uh, so he described what he could, uh, what he saw based on uh, his right, own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't know, you know what it was. He said it looks like a lake. Okay, so you're you're just you're saying you're not being burned forever in this lake. It's just no. it's there as a perimeter. What's going on in there then? Well, if you use science, uh, you know, stuck in if, there. You, if you really love science, okay, uh, the only reason you sense pain is where you have cell destruction, uh, whether it be fire or steam or whatever. That's cell destruction. If there's no cell destruction, all you do is sense heat. You see? Yeah. So it only starts hurting. When the flesh starts getting destroyed, where do the bad folks go when they die? Don't and go so to heaven where the angels they, die. The, the assumption <laughs> is <laughs> they portray people as though they're in hell in these See, natural bodies. You so you're saying that Lake of Fire song? That's not what it's like. You, you're not going to burn there. It's not Dante's Inferno. It is not. I mean, uh, look Chris? at Lazarus. Lazarus so what, is I'm down just saying, there in Hades. What is it? You don't know what you know exactly. Know what hey, it is. Excuse me, a, Carl yeah, is yeah, speaking yeah. to me. Chris, I have a question for you. Um, what do you think happened to Hitler as an atheist? I mean, he's a, oh, oh, he, he's an atheist. That's a valid question. Everybody he's knows the answer up. to that. He's, I think he's awaiting trial. Or I review. Guess Carl just wants to hear you. He just died. It it just went black. So that's it. He was here and. He did a lot of evil stuff, and some other people do less evil stuff, and there's really no karma. or You, you don't sense any kind of connection with the human race in your own mind previous to this existence here on the planet. Uh, uh, I don't understand that question because I'm don't not exist. smart enough. Don't you, don't you feel like, do that, haven't you sensed in your life karma, deja vu, pre-knowledge some sort of connection yeah. but i oh. call that just being a stoner you know like a pre-knowledge is me <laughs> knowing something forgetting it and then you know remembering it you know carl are well, you saying talking about past lives and things like this a soul coming through no, more I, don't than have, once? I don't have any of that carl is that what you're saying yeah i think our consciousnesses are eternal they have been here before and you're just Okay. No, I don't. But I, I, and, mean, and, I, I don't and, find it strange that an atheist doesn't believe that either. I like that I mean, idea. Of and, and you still haven't. That that means it was designed by an idiot, because you're born, you've lost all the information that well, you supposedly believe, learned. I don't believe it was designed. What do you gotta learn all over again? I, I guess. Well, it's been three believe, billion years. Yeah, I don't believe anything was designed. Well, you see the idea about karma, though. If you well, lived before you. You didn't obviously didn't benefit from any of the information of that life. All that so-called enlightenment, boom, it's gone. Here you are, born with a blank slate. Start all over again. Well, that, and then what you're saying, what you're saying is just silly. I mean, I mean it's yeah. not. It's not. It's, it's reality. A, it's valid. Babies are born with no information. Listen, listen, when I was born, okay, I I inherited my parents' DNA. It has a tremendous amount of knowledge in it. I don't right. have any physical access. Yeah knowledge or ability to manipulate it, but it controls my entire life, my temperament, how fast I can run, uh, all kinds of things or, about me. Or does so it? We well, bring, we bring with us, each one of us brings a huge amount of knowledge from well, the past. I like that point and, a lot. You're, you're free and, to and, believe that, but it didn't it, lead you to the nipple. The nipple, into our life. The, of course, the this is the thing we, we talked, exercise. You couldn't find the nipple. With. We haven't brought souls into it yet, though. You're talking about souls that, that come back and do all that. I mean... Kind of find the nipple. The dogs find the nipple. I, I never said yeah, that's funny. I, you I, think I, the dog was reincarnated? If I it, let me l it's let me just funny. put you this I mean, way: people believe if there's that, a consciousness. Just... No, that DNA thing. I believe that to be a fact. The DNA, right? Thing sounds, sure. If there's yeah. a consciousness pair, well, well let the, me ask you the, the question in the opposite direction. Then you that. you believe you're here because of DNA, right? No, I don't have any reason on why we're here. 
No, no. You're, as an atheist, you 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 think that the blueprint for the for the creature that you are is your DNA? Yes. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say I think about that, nor do I entirely comprehend what what you're leading me into. Well, would you <laughs> would you, would you agree that science has concluded that your DNA is the map for why you're here? The math map. The map. The map. The the physical map that creates like your cell Park, structure. Man. Um, DNA, yeah. you know. I would say DNA might explain okay, now, who I'm, you are and how you just, are, let, but let just get not to the, the why that you're Chris, here. Chris, Chris, do you also agree that you have a consciousness? Chris never really agreed with the first one. <laughs> well, I, do you, wanna, do you, well, I threw that Jurassic not, Park thing in there as a little segue. He never really bought that. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. A stone consciousness is a consciousness. <clears throat> What a stone like a <laughs> like a pebble like a rock? No, no. <laughs> somebody's smoking weed. Right, a stoner's consciousness is still a consciousness. Is my point. So if you have a consciousness and you believe that you're the product of a DNA map that put you here, then the secret to how your consciousness works is also contained in that DNA map. Yeah, so that's what you're saying. Yeah, I don't what quite understand talking about what a naturalism. consciousness is. I mean, what like you're talking about is naturalism. Consciousness, you're talking to me right now. Yeah. If I hit you with a taser and you passed out, then when you woke back yeah. up, say, oh, I was unconscious for 10 minutes, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so what about it? Oh, okay, so your consciousness, your string of memories and free will choices and pleasures and stoner memories and every other thing, that's that exists here as a reality, yes or no? Yes. And <laughs> are a physical product of that DNA map. So there's a very strong probability uh, that we, the what do you mean actual by, uh, we're all mechanism here. for how that consciousness works is contained within that DNA map. You see, that's, that's naturalism. Uh, the uh, premise of naturalism is that nothing immaterial exists. Therefore, the soul does not exist. And so you are basically a biological machine. No, and that, that I'm is not it. saying that at all. I'm saying to you that you exist on physical dimensions and in metaphysical dimensions, and the map to both is inside your DNA. I think Tim's a Tom Waits fan. Bone machine. <laughs> but, but, yeah, it, it, it's accepted that you believe that, but Chris says, I don't even believe, I don't believe in any of that metaphysical stuff. I, that's, that is the definition of an atheist. Am I wrong about that or no? I don't have a problem I, with that. The I problem thought atheist is that means there, most people, there's nothing most people who think who think like he do haven't taken into account how their existing consciousness does what it does. There has to be some mechanism for that. I mean, uh, you know, I've uh, I've, I've listened. Uh, what do you mean mechanism? Mechanism. How does your thought processes, which have created your identity of who you are, how do they work? I am who I am. Magnets, <laughs> man. How do they work? Magnets well, are trippy. Yeah. Your your brain is both a physical and yep. a metaphysical instrument. You ever look up at the stars, man? It's like a computer. A computer is a physical instrument and it also thinks. It makes conclusions. It can, uh, that Watson one can even do fancy stuff. That I Watson. they'd say a computer thinks. Yeah, it does. Like a computer does not have a conscious. This right, right. It's a cruder version. I was using it as an example. Your brain is obviously much more sophisticated, a much faster, right, much more yeah. sophisticated quantum Carl, instrument. I think that the atheist argument is that that's all just natural, and there is nothing on the other side that's guiding that. I, I know they think that. I mean, obviously, I thought that for many years. You're I was trying a to get atheist. Chris to, to yeah, agree to something on the other side. I don't understand just, what this mechanism is. And he's just not going to because that's the definition of his stance. Oh well, oh, oh. when you talk map and you and when you talk map and you talk mechanism, you see when you're talking about the body and DNA, you're talking about the body is produced by the DNA. Uh, I, I don't. Are you trying to suggest that the DNA creates the immaterial soul? What I'm suggesting to you is that you live in a universe composed of dimensions which are very carefully balanced in what I call a deterministic manner. In other words, your DNA, the matter around you, all interact according to the laws of physics. 
to provide a level playing field so that your consciousness can make true free will decisions. Okay. That's In other words, if you're under the control of some influencing agent, can you make a free will decision? The answer is no. Therefore, in other words, what really value does Chris Brake's life have if somebody else in a control room somewhere, God, the devil, a matrix, has been pushing a button that makes him make these decisions? It, it right. Doesn't, it, right? Right. Yeah, who said there was any point or value? Well, I don't agree with the premise, first of all, that God or Satan controls people. Neither do I. That's what I'm saying. You have free will. Free will. Yes, you do. Own. Yes, yes, you do have free will. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like, I wasn't saying that, but I happen to, yes, yes, we have free will. There you go. Well, do you, that, uh, I'm saying to I you, agree. That's, I'm saying to you, that's not an accident. It takes a very, very careful balancing of the forces in the universe for you to end up being here inside a carbon based life form with free will. That's all. It takes an extraordinary. Oh, isn't it awesome? Right. It's just a and that's freak. Just, it's, it's a freak it's not, chance. It just happens. It's not an, accident, you know? not an accident, not a freak chance. It's just a freak chance. It's fucking weird, isn't it? And we just happen to be here and are able to take it in. It's nuts. Not an accident, not a freak chance. But what if it was? I mean, like, that's just the... the what if it was? The math doesn't say that it is. I mean, the look up... Says it's very improbable, right? Like, extremely. Right. It was Elohim. But if no, it look was, up, look, then... look up, look up, Doctor Conway's free will theorem. He's the head of yeah, mathematics at Princeton University, and and you, you'll see right there that basically the the particles of which our entire universe are composed uh, have free will. There's a the reason. The particles have free will. Elohim created Correct. this particles. planet. Correct. That's right. The particles. The particles. The particles have free will. Have free will. That's no. Right. We are in the matrix. Yeah, your, it's called, your it's particles. Called spin, it's called a spin two particle. Cancer, and, and, man, cancer. They're, you know, they just, it, they're free will. They tell, decide they tell, to start Tell your them. listeners this is the most important thing. Go online. This is the most Princeton important U thing. Go what to does... Princeton University and listen to these Dr. Yeah. Conway yeah. lectures yeah. on a spin one particle. Dr. What does an electron decide with? What's a Conway? <laughs> the electrons are Satanists. The, they have, in other yeah. words, they're what our universe is composed of, and they have this as a basic If they have free will, then why isn't your arm on the wall and, you know, your your brain over there i mean in other words if your whole if every particle of your body has free because will they're limited to their laws like we're limited to the law of gravity you know they're limited in, to in, a, in other words the law of your consciousness they don't know how to break out of your skin they, yeah, they don't have free they will they won't survive if they leave your, your skin. electrons are depressed because they're stuck to your skanky body and they don't have free will <laughs> if they can't get out of there and form something else or whatever so what's what's the lowest form of life according to karma According my vote, my vote is butt crack bacteria. Okay. They don't even know they're in there, though. That's not. That's, you got to have a consciousness to make it real bad. Well, according to this, uh, everything oh, has consciousness. That's, that's thing that's particles have consciousness. <laughs> they, they certainly should. <laughs> well, he said they have free will. Do they have consciousness too? Particles. I thought. Do they, I, do they have conversations? <laughs> that's Carl, cool, I'm, I'm not making. You know, hello. <laughs> I'm sorry, what'd you say? Are you saying that particles have free will? They yes. do. Do they have consciousness? No. Okay. But they act independent uh, when you measure their angular momentum of, of, in other words, they act independently of where they were in time. This is the definition of physics of free will. The independently, but with with limits. If you measure a spin one particle you'll get three readings. You'll get a negative, a very tiny negative number, and then a zero, and then a very tiny positive number. Now, when you square these, you get a one, a zero, and a one. You always get a one, a zero, and a one. In other words, uh, and the only way this is possible, and which, of course, obviates all functions of mathematics, is if the particle has free will. If it's appearing at, at each uh, place, so yeah, to speak, in the electron cloud, independent. Yeah, in it's time. in different places at the same time. I saw That's what right. the bleep. It's all and, new and age I saw stuff. Walk to remember. Yeah, and, and, they're, and they're in so, different places at the same time. I'm with you. I mean, I've heard that stuff. It's the new age, like metaphysical stuff, and they they say it, that's a you know. 
Oh, it's very important. It it, it goes I was to how... say they say it's a fact. I mean, yeah. Look, I mean, well, you can you can see the lecture yourself. It's six one hour lectures is magnificent. I mean, he covers the, basically the whole history of the the unified field theory paradox. What do you think uh, about that the Emoto guy with the with the the drops? Oh yeah. So we got question three. What words in the Bible have been purposely mistranslated, and why? Well, there's uh, ephesus, which means uh, liberty. Uh, they translate that as forgive. Uh, they, uh, thanatos is always a judgment of a death by a court or a legal governing authority. Uh, they just translate it as death, generically. Apothanesco is always a physical death, but they just translate that as, yet, as death, generically. Uh, they the, the hilasterion they they translate that as uh, atonement it doesn't even mean that uh, well, there's just all kinds the, of words what's the motive here and why they have to create vagaries that you see if you're going to alter a document you have to be careful how in how you do it you can't just write something else that's that has no bearing to the original document and so they they change the definition of words. They don't translate correctly. Uh, the idea, you know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for the liberation from your falling short condition. That, that would be a good translation of that, but they translate it as believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, which you see they have God being pissed off at you to begin what with. What is the difference? What are you saying? And, and they're trying to make the, it seem like penal substitution is in the Bible when it actually isn't. Okay. okay. Now, for okay. the first yeah. time, the first right. time I've understood what he's saying, and I actually agree with him. He's he's saying that um, I get that, it. I get it too. Right. That 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 there's a difference between. Uh, and by the way, this ties in perfectly with what I was saying as well. In other words, so you're you uh, In other words, you you're not judged by God. You're essentially judged by your own acts, uh, and you, of course, I believe you. Now I lost it. He's saying you're not, Uh, God is, God's not punching. God's not punching. Well, yeah, right. Is that what what you're saying, Timothy? uh, One distinction to me, it sounds like you don't think God is mad at you. Well, in order to get people to believe that the penal substitution is in the Bible and that every man deserves death, they must portray God as though he's pissed off at everybody. That ain't very loving. I, and I agree that's not true. He's not. He, he loves you. He forgives you for everything. That's why they will take and a verse out of context and they will and say the penalty of sin is and, death. Right. And, and they'll will, say that's all men. That's what they'll say. I want you to choose love and forgiveness through that free will choice. Yeah, and I, I agree with you 100% actually. The Good or whole, evil. Good or evil. You know, you want to be a decent fellow or do you want to be Hitler? It's a, a, everybody's right. choice. Who can make the decision? And, some and, people, some people don't even know their own name in this life, and they never will. And I, and I, and there's other things that are in the Bible that I do also think, obviously, he's correct about that are misinterpreted. Like I, I don't think, for example, the Bible says the Jews are the chosen people. I believe that mm. verse. Means, I believe that verse means they are the people who can choose. In other words, free will is the single most important component of all religious doctrine because without it you're not accountable right faith has no point uh uh the, the love definition which our universe was created for has no point everything and of course all physics somehow gets down to saying free will is what it's all about as well that's not a coincidence well, it has to do with reality. Everybody knows that everybody can choose to be a decent fellow or to be a selfish little jerk. Any, you know, there, there's people who want to do well, and there's people who don't want to do well. Do and, you need uh, Jesus Christ to forgive you for your sins so you go to heaven? No. You don't, don't even, you know, need, you don't um, even you know, speak. You don't even need to I, speak English or have okay, ever had Carl, the story told. It to depends you on. Christ. Oh. If you act with okay. love, you say no. Well, you, you see, it, what do you say? It depends on. You see, that's yeah, that magic like English maybe. word sin. Like that magic no. English word sin. It, it like depends no. on. You see, there are things that you can do that you do in ignorance, and that's not held against you to begin with because you didn't know any better. Just like like how you are with your children. You see, you're, he didn't know any better, right? So you ain't asking him. You know, uh, I don't, I don't you see what case. I mean? 
Uh, well, I'm, I'm saying God isn't God isn't a moron. I mean, you got all these people around here pretending on how right. smart they are. Well, if God is a whole hell of a lot smarter than us, He knows wh whether uh, somebody has done something, f you know, uh, for which uh, they probably need taken to the woodshed for, as opposed to somebody who did something in ignorance or whatever. So He just you know? knows, like you don't have to do that whole ritual of accepting anybody as a savior, any anything like that. He no. Just it, it says, uh, it, it says, uh, uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for the liberation from your falling short condition. All right, John, say All what right. you got to say, and then we're going to wrap her up. Oh, you were no, making a face, John. I thought you no, were I was just say. saying, I, I, I'd like to, you know, I don't, I don't ever, you know, feel like I understand your position exactly. It sounds like you totally believe the Christian doctrine up until the point where you say you're totally against it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm confused. Well, uh, I don't know. Maybe you could read up on it there a little I'll bit. Have there's to one read thing. The there's one thing. You know, sure. Can, will you send us a copy of the book? We you didn't can, get one. You know? you yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll send you one. I, uh, I really would we'll like send to you read one. It. Uh, there's one thing that's for sure. Damn seldom do I not understand what somebody's saying. Okay. And I can end it on this. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments. They wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure that has no relation to reality. That was Nikola Tesla. I already was quite a smart fellow. What is three six nine? I like that guy, Nikola Tesla. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, his stuff is still classified. Yeah, he's real smart. Three but six I, nine. I, 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 he but called Einstein an idiot. <laughs> there are a to. lot of mathematicians who believe in God. So uh, I, I wouldn't blame math necessarily. Well, what he's what he's what he's hinting at there is trying to replace. Mathematics for evidence. Mathematics isn't evidence. You see? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. What is it? You know, it's just some math. What do you got there? Science, man. Science. Ma right, mathematics uh, isn't evidence. Science. Is all it is. I, I don't actually agree with you on that. Look, you can think up some okay. idea and make up a mathematical equation to where it works like it seems. Out, it seems like it's going to work out. And it's uh, what? So therefore, it's true. Works on paper. No. I would say closer to the truth would be, let's say you look at how the universe is structured and you find that there's a beauty and a truth to the math that creates a specific dimensional space that you exist in that has certain metaphysical opportunities that are a result of that math. This implies a creator, a consciousness that it was done with careful forethought rather than it isn't what you call evidence. It is obviously you can't take it into a courtroom, as you've mentioned several times. That, but it is metaphysical evidence that there was a plan, and that this plan has careful balances in it to make sure that what we're here to do, we get an opportunity to do, and that makes our purpose here very important. You know, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what happened here. I thought we were wrapping this up. Then we got sucked into the fucking universe again. Uh, so I'm just going to say thank you guys, Tim, uh, Carl. Thank you so we'll much for coming We'll send you a book, on. man. Uh, we'll thank send you a book. All right. Have a good one, guys. Later. All right. That was Tim Allman, author of The Principled Legal Standard for the First Genuine Doctrinal Reformation of the Church. That was also Carl Spain. Check him out at carlspain.com. WordPress.com. Oh, Whoa. man. Oh, that was some deep, that was some deep business there. I really enjoyed speaking on those two. That was some deep, deep shit. I hope he sent us the book. We just got a book from uh, Rosalinda Randall. All right. Thanks, Rosalinda. Yeah. Free... Rosa, Rosalinda. Rosalinda. Free book in the mail. You have to check it out, Jake. It's not free. We earned it. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank Darren Snyder from Indian Tune and uh, Jake and uh, John G from 405 and Mike Moore from the World of All Day on our radio program and Rich Barker. His band was on the cover of Nuvo. To be old. Real big. It's a gay black Republican. And it made me so happy because we used to give them shit about their name, but we were the bone fags. And, you know, you never get to see that. And just to see gay black Republican printed huge on the cover of a local publication cracked me up. <laughs> so congratulations, Rich. Thank you. And uh, Kenny Mike, 
Fuck them. Do a fucking show, <laughs> assholes. Hey, Jake, who do you want to thank? Uh, I'd love to thank you, actually, for going through so much pain to talk to us every night. And all the nice, time. Jake. Because you're always talking, so it's got to be painful. A lot. Especially when I've got this, when I'm like cutting myself every time I speak. But that, this is the first time that's happened. You say Carl made it hurt? No, I, I chipped my tooth. And saying no, certain words. Saying Carl. Oh, I yeah. Think he said. Yeah, I'm not going to say it. It's got all the. <laughs> the all right. Well, Thanks, let's Jay. also thank uh, Ron at Radio Mix Music, J- Jeremy at Couch Potato Nation, Mark at Tangent Bound Network, Jack at The Mix FM, Suma Peter at Loud Town Online Radio. Mike from the Wheelbarrow Full of Dicks Internet Radio Program, Tom at TalkStream Live, Mike at IRN Internet Radio Network, Toby at Radio Blitz, The Mars Soundman at United Sound Choice, Tico at FGFs, Peter at Cornucopia Broadcasting, TJ at Deep Talk Radio, Big Tate, Big Nate, Big Tate, somewhere, dropping bombs, Big Tate, on the Big Tate. Jake, you got a car accident. We didn't talk about it. I know. We'll talk about it next week. Next week. No, we, no, we won't. We're going to talk about it after the show. <laughs> and then we're never going to bring it up again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you said you didn't really want to talk about it anyway. Yeah, it wasn't that big of a story. I mean, it kind of was. Indiana rain sucks lately. Well, I'll find out. Thanks, Jake. Okay, thank you very much. Hope you play it. And I know this is recording. And I hope you play it. Okay, see you guys.